Steve here with the janitorialstore.com, the channel where we help cleaning business owners scale their businesses with systems, controls, tools, and resources. How to care for cleaning tools and equipment. You know, this has always been a pet peeve of mine from day one. You know, you have to take care of your equipment because your equipment will take care of you. The thing I always hated was that get out to a job site and here a piece of equipment wouldn't work or it was so dirty I couldn't use it. Uh, you know, multiple things like that there. That would just frustrate the heck out of me. You know, and there is no reason for it. Obviously the person that used it last didn't clean it up or didn't drain the tank or, or didn't do something. You know, and it's very, very frustrating. That's one of the things I never did like is whenever I opened up a janitor's closet and I seen our equipment just in disarray and uh, then I'd go over and I'd look at it and the mop, mop, the mop bucket wasn't cleaned, uh, the mop head wasn't rinsed, uh, you know, and you know the, the auto scrubber wasn't drained, you know, just different things like that there. Very frustrating. You know, and the thing is that you want to do this. It's all about your image. You know, what kind of a message are you, are you giving your customers you know, when they go in the janitor's closet because let's say they needed, uh, needed something or there it's an additional storage room uh, to where they go in there for, for storage of their own and here they see your equipment is just filthy and it stinks because it wasn't rinsed or, or put away properly you know, that's just not good so, you know, that's the whole thing uh, that and, you know, I've seen this many times when people have gotten to a job site I've seen these cleaning businesses, they'd open up their van or their car and stuff was just thrown in there, uh, all disarray, and it looked like it had gone through a, a war. You know, it was just filthy, scummy, uh, you know, and then they'd bring that stuff out and they'd set it up on, on the curb or the back of their vehicle or whatever because they're, they're getting ready to go into a building. You know, and it was just, uh, just looked horrible. You know, so that's the thing, there's really no excuse for that. Uh, the one thing that we all should be doing is that we should all be training our employees on how to how to take care of these cleaning tools and equipment. Not that hard. You know, the one thing, what I've got here, a spray bottle. Now, a spray bottle is so easy to take care of. You know, make sure that they wipe it down when, when they're done with it. If they're having problems with the trigger sprayer, well, change the sprayer. Make sure you got additional sprayers, you know because that's a pretty common thing that happens is that the sprayer, you know, the trigger will go out. So just have some extras. But make sure they got it properly labeled and make sure that it's wiped down when they're done with it. You know, because that's one of the things is that uh, there's just really no excuse for it. Uh, something else is, you know, I've got, a, I've, got, I've got a caddy here. So now the caddy, uh, is it organized? Is it clean? You know, because again, it really sets the tone. It really gives a message to your clients when they're looking at your supplies, uh, your tools and your supplies. Uh, there's no reason why this should be dirty and filthy and not organized. Just take the time to do it. So the other thing is too, you know, you'd have, uh, you could have small brushes, you could have brushes for your slow speeds. Uh, so, you know, make sure that these are all cleaned out, and hung up and dried, and just make sure that we're taking care of them. Same thing with the <coughs> microfiber cloths. <coughs> You know, uh, you know, when we're done with these, we need to we need to rinse them out and we need to we need to clean them. You know, if you have a system in place where you're having these laundered, well, then make sure that they're separating the colors and putting them in separate bags. Uh, you know, and then uh, and then uh, they can be laundered. Now, in some cases, whenever you are, you know, uh, if you're using, let's say, you're using a green cloth for dusting. Well, every time you've dusted, go ahead and rinse that out in, in uh, uh, warm water, you know, and then wring it out and hang it, and then it's good for the next day. Now, you can do that for quite you know, quite a few processes before you ha have to, uh, you know, uh, replace that cloth. Now, the same thing is true for brooms. Now, I've seen this many times where a broom is being sat on its bristles. Well, that causes the bristles to curl up. You don't want to do that. Make sure they set it on the handle with the bristles up. You know, then you'll have that broom for a long time. I can show you brooms that I've had for 18 years, and it's because you just take care of them. Now, the same thing is true with wet mops. You know, a lot of people are using uh, microfiber flat mops, but again, you know, take care of it. Make sure that make sure that it's weighed down and that it still uh, that it still locks in place when you extend the handle. Um, 
you know, make sure that those pads are taken care of too. You know, again, they're just like microfiber cloths. You know, you got your pads. Take care of them. Wash them on a regular basis. You know, make sure that things are looking good. So, one of the biggest things that you probably always see is uh, dirty mop buckets and ringers. Man, I tell you, you see it all the time. Next time you're walking through a, a let's say a, an airport or, or any uh, restaurant or something like that there, uh, I guarantee you you're going to see a dirty mop bucket ringer because they just don't take the time to clean them properly after every use. And in fact, if you were to look in the mop bucket, you'll probably see so much water will just be black because it's so dirty. And obviously they're going to have their mops in it too. But anyway, you know, that's just, again, it, it's, it's not necessary. Make sure that you rinse your mop buckets out and your ringers and wipe them down. And in some cases, if you have to, once in a while, get some, get some good all-purpose cleaner and go ahead and clean them. Spray them down, scrub them with a brush, hose them off, you know, um, you can keep them looking nice for a long, long time. Uh, something you want to think about with your upright vacuum cleaners. <clears throat> now, the most common thing that you have to do is make sure you dump the bag. Because that is one of the things that you'll see a lot of cleaning companies uh, say that the vacuum doesn't work. Well, it's because the bag is full or the, the chute is uh, clogged. So, you know, just take some time, empty the bag, replace the bag. You know, if it's a paper bag or if, it, if it's a paperless, you know, just take the time to, to clean it and uh, dump the bag. And again, you know, take the time to wipe down the equipment. When you're done with it, take a microfiber cloth and wipe it down. Uh, get that dirt, dirt and dust off it. You know, check the beater bar. If it has a beater bar on that upright, get all the hair and, and uh, 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 whatever else is on there, get it off there. Um, you know, you, a lot of times you can just remove that uh, beater bar all completely. It makes it real easy to clean that off. Now, something else, you know, uh, the backpack vacuums are, are pretty similar. You know, check the bag, make sure the bag is empty. Make sure your filters are clean. You know, that's very important. Again, you know, because all these things uh, will affect how the vacuum cleaner operates. So, as long as you're doing those things and keeping the filters and the bags clean, you know, your vacuum cleaner should last you a long, long time. Again, wipe them down, wipe off the cord. Make sure the, the cord ends aren't broken or bent, you know. And that there is just a matter of training your employees not to pull the cord from a distance, but walk up and grab a hold of the plug and unplug it that way. Um, because that's the number one reason why the, the ground plugs get broken off on them. So, you know, simple things that we can do uh, just to take the time to do them. Uh, you know, it pays big, big dividends. You know, I've got a backpack that I've had for, gosh, uh, I don't know how many years now. Uh, well, I sold that business in 2001, and it's 2020 now. So, and I still got the backpack. It runs, runs like it's brand new. And it looks like it's brand new because I take care of it. So, and that's what we have to do. You know, so uh, some of the other things, too, that we need to watch are like a high-speed floor machine, a high-speed buffer. You know, uh, these here, when we're done with them, again, take a microfiber cloth and wipe them down because they do, they'll kick up some dust and stuff, and it will settle on the machine. That and if you're spray buffing, sometimes what will happen is the operator will spray the, uh, spray the spray buff from a spray bottle over the machine and some, some of it will fall onto the machine. Well, make sure you wipe that off. You know, don't let it dry on there. Uh, same thing is true as if you're using a slow speed floor machine and you're stripping and waxing. You know, it gets, it gets some stripper on it. You know, use splash guards and, uh, you know, take the time after you're done to go ahead and wipe down that piece of equipment. Again, you know, they'll, they'll stay looking good for a long, long time. Um, and like I say, you know, that has a lot to do with an image. Again, I think if you're ever out uh, and you're seeing somebody that's running a, a slow speed floor machine and they're either they're buffing a floor or they're scrubbing a floor or something, take a look at it. Chances are that it's probably going to look filthy, the bumper's going to be dirty, you know, it's just it's going to be filthy. Because again, they're not taking the time to wipe down the machine and keep it clean. And again, you know, if, if you have to, mix up some st floor stripper, spray it on the machine, wipe it down, scrub it up, you know, and, and clean it. Uh, that's all you have to do. Um, you know, the cords are very important. Again, you know, you don't want to have no cuts or nicks in the cord. So you're always checking the cord before and after every use, you know, because you have to unwind the cord and you have to wind the cord up. So that's the good time to take a cloth and wipe it down and check for any cuts. So pretty simple stuff. Um, so then, you know, you also have wet vacuums. 
Now your wet wet dry vacuums is another thing that I see the same thing, is that they may have a wet vacuum that has a uh, uh, an off aisle uh, wand on it, uh, but usually the the vacuum itself is filthy. The wand is filthy. The hose is, is dirty, you know. And those have some of those have filters in them too. So you know, make sure the filters are clean, you know, and, and make sure you rinse out the inside uh, uh, tank, you know, after every use. Rinse it out, wipe it out. Make sure it stays dry, you know. Just take care of it. Take the time to do that. Now, in some of these here, these wet vacs, they've actually got, uh, uh, you know, uh, a front squeegee on them. So again, you know, take the time after every time you use that to rinse it off, you know, and, and wipe it down clean. So that's all you have to do. You know, and never, never, ever let uh, let any water sit in it. You know, that tank has to be emptied every time. So on these wet vacs, make sure you do that. Now something else you can do too is on your carpet machines. The one thing I see often is people always leave water in the solution tank. So don't do that. Um, you know, it starts to smell and, and uh, it's just not good. So after every use, you know, uh, make sure that you drain that, drain the recovery tank and, and the solution tank, you know, and rinse it out. Uh, make sure that it's staying clean. You know, then make sure you leave the lid open so it can air dry. Uh, and that's what you have to do. And again, make sure you wipe down the outside of that carpet machine. Again, you know, it's all about our image. You know, we don't want to be walking through or doing a job and where there's, you know, especially in public, uh, where people can see the, the equipment that we're using and it just looks horrible. You know, um, I've seen companies that have had their company names on some of this equipment and in some cases you couldn't even see the, the company name completely because there's so much dirt on the equipment. So, just not a good image. And, you know, last but not least, what about the company vehicles? You know, we have to take care of those too. So before any of, you, any of your employees get in a company vehicle, you should have a checklist. They should be doing a visual checklist of all of the things on that vehicle. Are the tires inflated? You know, uh, is the wiper blaze good? You know, did they check the windshield wiper fluid? How about the oil? Has the oil, uh, you know, does it, does it need oil? Um, but you need to check all these things. And again, you know, the inside of the vehicle is, is, is important too. Let's make sure that we keep it clean. You know, do we have SDS sheets in place? Uh, you know, and, you know, is it uh, presentable to where if we were to show a customer our company vehicle that we would be proud of it? You know, so, you know, just, the, just these things alone, you know, uh, if you do that, you know, you're, it's going to really make a difference in your image. So these are just some of the things that you can do for the care of uh, cleaning, uh, for cleaning tools and equipment. You know, there's much, much more that you can do, but it basically, common sense will tell you, just take the time to go ahead and wipe down the equipment with a damp microfiber cloth. That's all you have to do. And if you do that, you know, at least the exterior of the machine is going to always be looking good. But, you know, always make sure you dump the bag, clean the filters, and, and do the things that you need to do. Um, because, like I say, as uh, when I started this video, you don't want to get out in the field and have a piece of equipment not operate for you because of ne ne uh, you know uh, negligence you know of just not taking care of it you just don't want to do that uh, that will cost you a lot of frustration and cost you a lot of time so just don't do it well hopefully you got some value from this video and if you did uh, feel free to comment and share uh, and if you not have not already go ahead and subscribe to our channel and remember to turn on those bell notifications to get the latest updates of new vehicle new videos uh, for building a successful cleaning business. So, till then, thanks for checking in, and we'll see you next time.